Look at this trio of gorgeous paperweights. This one is a Rolf. It's real flowers encased in lucite. The other two are glass, a Mille Fiore, and a gorgeous iridescent art glass piece. Now the question becomes, which of these is the most valuable? Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. It's a beautiful Friday lunchtime here in Las Vegas. The sun is shining. It's about 73 degrees. And I am here at the Goodwill at Rainbow and Ulta. But I'm not alone. My mum is here with Hello. me. We Hello, are going everyone. to have a thrifter palooza here. What are you going to look for, mum? I need a little ring holder or trinket dish to put next to my kitchen sink because I really don't like to do any work in my rings or put my rubber gloves on over my rings. So I need to look for a pretty little ring holder or some sort of dish. Excellent, that's, that's exciting. We are obviously together going to look for items that I can offer to you in my haul at the end of the video. And anything that I don't sell there will get put up on eBay or in my Sunday 2 p.m. whatnot sales. Without further ado, let's go inside and see what we can find. Let's, let's go, go thrifting! thrifting. I remember a few months ago I was at this very same Goodwill with a dear friend and fellow YouTuber and she is going to be coming back into town at the end of this month. Together we are going to host a meet and greet at a fun location. Do stay tuned till the end of the video and I will be revealing the details and the date. Here we are at the Goodwill. Let's go in and see what we can find. We'll have to have a look to see what the colour of the week is. Every item with that colour sticker is 50% off. We will grab a cart here. I love this Goodwill because the hard goods are right at the front of the store. You want your own cart, Mum? Yeah. All right. Let me pull that one out for you. Oh, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> Oh, maybe not that one either. Yeah. All right, let's go over here. How about we take this one? It's already ready. You take that one and then... There we go. Ta-da! All right. Oh, this one is out because it's not a very good one. There we go. I've got my thrifting Vegas blanket to cushion all my finds in my cart and we both have our reusable shopping bags. Let's find an aisle where there's nobody else to make it a little bit easier to shop. Here we are in the vases, planters and florals. The shelves look really, really full. There's some quite pretty arrangements up there, planter boxes. Oh, look at this. This is a Disney Mickey Mouse napkin holder. You could also use it for letters. It's in great shape. It has its original sticker. It's $5. Mickey Mouse pieces are always collectible and high in demand. So let's make this our first find. My blanket's in place. So let's pop Mickey in the cart. I noticed this lovely cased bubble glass cased in a metal wire frame. I do have a lot of vases in my booth at the moment. It's not something I'd really want to ship and it's $10. So I am going to leave that on the shelf. This is interesting. It has a hole in the side there. It's a shell and nautical theme signed. Is that H Pulse 2022? interesting piece. I am going to pop that in the cart and see if we can figure out uh, what it is and what it's used for. We'll probably use a Google lens to see if we can find something similar. 
This is a silk pothos plant. Let's see, that looks like melamine. Oval melamine platter, just a plain yellow, not really interesting enough for me to purchase. Some seed starter soil there. Another interesting vase. We'll move that to make sure there's nothing of interest behind it. This is a Wamsuta piece. I think they make furniture as well. Lots of planting pots. This is a Lala Loopsy doll. I believe this is the Tulip Fairy. Her pod is a little bit dirty, but that's something that can be cleaned. Some of these Lala Loopsies can go for really good profit. So I am going to uh, look her up on eBay in just a few minutes to see uh, if she is worth picking up. I believe she was $3. I'm just going to pop this up on the top shelf so nobody trips over it. And we'll keep going. As always, I am checking the vases uh, with the arrangements in to see if there is anything vintage, anything collectible, mostly florist pieces. This is a cute little vase, quite lightweight though, not ever such good quality, a little bit chipped. So I am going to leave that. Some little saucers. These would be ideal to put under plants. That is a flash painted goblet. Possibly something from one of our casinos here in Vegas. You can order some really massive drinks here. <laughs> Checking this brass piece. It's made in India. Not very good quality, unfortunately. More baskets and plants, silk arrangements, pots. This is, ooh, again, very lightweight. I love the look of this one though. This looks Italian. It is signed something Italy. Really, really pretty, ever such nice quality. The white you see isn't damaged, it's just uh, water staining. That will come off with just a bit of vinegar. So that is a great find, we'll take that. And I also saw this lovely brass rose trivet. It's marked Taiwan, that tells me it's vintage. It is $7, but I think it's worth paying up for. I am willing to pay up for something that there is going to be room for profit on. Bob the Builder, little children's bowl there, a Mikasa vase. I have lots of clear glass in my inventory, so if I'm going to pick something up, it has to be really super special. This is ever so interesting. It looks uh, terracotta with an ethnic hand-painted design on it. Unfortunately, this chip is huge and the top is also flaking away. It could be repaired with some glue um, and some uh, clay and more paint, but I just don't have the time for another project. I want to take a look to see if the design comes up on Google. So we are going to do a Google search. I'll push Google for a browser, hit the little camera to bring up my Google lens. I'll hit the lens that will let me center the piece and take a picture like so. And then it's going to search around the internet to see if it can come up with any visual matches. There's a very similar one for $20 there, 25 and uh, I am thinking that those don't have damage to them. So that tells me that we are going to leave this lovely pot on the shelf. This is a lovely Asian vase. It appears to be hand painted with 
tones of peach and orange and gold overlay it's absolutely lovely really delicate only $2.99 and it's gray tag which means it's a dollar fifty let's pop that in the cart and keep going on this shelf two amber glass vases these are made in China contemporary pieces original retail of $20 but not really special enough for me to pick up still checking the planter vessels if you're enjoying the video it would mean the world to me if you could give it a thumbs up drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel with the little red button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen this planter says precious pecan pie sadly it's a bit worse for where the pecan on the end is uh, all rubbed off and worn this i believe is party light a variation of that mosaic um, design somebody's creation there what's this olive canister looks like it could be a spaghetti jar not marked this is a wall hanging i think it is a project piece i wish there was some sort of design on the vessel uh, again not exciting enough for me to pick up is a cobalt vase this is a modern florist piece not vintage made in the USA studio Nova there this piece is interesting big and heavy it is brass thin brass over ceramic the brass is very very dented and damaged unfortunately it's super duper heavy $15 uh, because of the denting and the damage I'm going to leave that here are the clear glass pieces mostly florist arrangement pieces that has a daisy and button look to it but again contemporary This piece looks like older glass. It's got a colored tint to it. $2 on sale. I'm going to bring out the, the black light just to see it doesn't glow. We'll keep going. Larger pieces up here. This is interesting. Oh, that is decoupage almost like a plastic sheeting over a bottle blue poinsettia let's go around the corner here into the plastic aisle mum is at the other end there let's have a stroll through just to see if there is anything in this aisle snoopy plates they're a dollar each but sadly just seeing if there is a date on there doesn't look like they're dated sadly very worse for wear really really scratched up we'll leave those they separate the plastics into colors I always enjoy the rainbow effect all the colors here mum is saying that there is a piece of pewter over here that uh, we should take a look at I think it's a is it a lidded sugar bowl let's see it's an older piece let's look at the mark Prisner pewter number 2139 the lid is a little bit dented what's this piece not marked reminds me a little bit of the Denby speckle effect um, doesn't have a price on it but I think we will pop it in the cart and uh, see if we can find a value on it on eBay sadly pewter doesn't sell ever so well for me but we shall see
Mum has found a cup and saucer set. I think that's Home Laughlin, Mum, is it? It's $5 for the set. What does that say? Eggshell. That's an interesting mark. I've not seen that one before. Let's uh, take out my phone and do a Google image search like we did on this painted pot here. I'll get back out of that and back to my little camera icon. I'll push that. I'll push the search with your camera. I'll point it at the cup and saucer and take a picture. Wait for Google Lens to find some visual matches. Oh, it comes right up. It is Homer Laughlin. Vintage teacup and saucer. That one's not just the same. That was $13. I think we'll leave that. They just wheeled out four brand new cards. So let's have a look, see what treasures we can find. Some plant pots in here, frying pans. Oh, look at that, lovely. Hen on nest, mum, can you grab that for me? You can pop that in your cart. Mine is getting a bit full. Some candlesticks there, not very heavy or old. I have some of these for cereal, they're quite good. What's this under here? Looks like uh, Asian cherry blossom. I wonder what that is. It's a little cup here. Let's see. It's a box. It's six dollars. It's a partial calligraphy set. The brushes are there, but missing um, some of the paints. Perhaps we'll see if mum wants that. Mum has lovely penmanship, so she might be interested in that. I'm going to pop it in the cart and see. Oh, look at this. Jack Daniels vintage tin. The lid has come uh, off of the tin. It's actually attached on three little hinges. This is an original one made in England. These are quite uh, collectible and profitable. I can easily fix that lid. So we will pop this into the cart. Let's see. It's in reasonably good shape. A few scratches on it. It has the original paperwork uh, paper insert on the inside of the tin there. We'll put our calligraphy set in the cart and see if mum has any interest. I'm back over here having a look at these erasable ceramic place cards. They are $10 but new in the box so we will open the box shortly and have a little look see what they are. I've also spotted at the bottom of this basket, a Harley Davidson mug and a Mickey Mouse Christmas mug. So I'm going to gently take both of these out because both have potential to be profitable. But what I will need to do is look up uh, both of these separately on eBay just to see. There are a select few that sell really well for good profit, but many uh, are very easy to come, come by and right in the eight to twelve dollar range. Here are the erasable place cards. We'll pop those in too. This is the section of miscellaneous little utensils for the kitchen. Wilton piece. Oh, my mum told me that Wamsuta actually makes sheets, not furniture. So yeah, she is familiar with that brand. There's a Darth Vader cake pan, quite rusty. Oh, look at these. These are little cork coasters, drink coasters. That is Warwick Castle in England. It's a dollar. It's another one 
what does that say? Leeds Castle. Let's look around to see. I think these originally came in a set of six. There's not really much we can do with two. Lots of lids and pans. Just picking up pieces. Oh, here's some Ikea cookie cutters. Well, there's another coast it down on the bottom here we'll add that to our three and see um, if we can find the last three this is the kitcheny bit aisle pans and molds that one's christmas these look brand new baking pans and cookie sheets. It's quite a small cookie sheet though. I am looking for one, but uh, I want it to be larger. Fondue set or baking pans. This is an interesting little basket. It's $4. Looks like transferware flowers on there. Let's pop that in the cart too. This is a little Asian kettle. I think this would originally have come in a set with some cups. A little bit plain, not very exciting. I think we'll leave that on the shelf and keep going. Little saucer there. And some ramekins, coffee pots, more pans. I found uh, that vintage dansk pan in my last video and oh goodness, so many people were interested in that. Absolutely lovely. The crisscross top, very, very sought after design that. There is another new cart on the end here. Let's have a look at this one. There is a novelty wine set, cat themed. Some pens in there. Up top, we've got some uh, figurines. There's a ballerina here. Sadly, she does have a little bit of damage. A cat bottle, some blue glass, a globe. I have a couple of globes in my inventory and for some reason they don't move ever so quickly for me. So I'm going to leave that one for somebody else. We've got some trays and some toiletries in here. Soup bowl and sandwich dish. I'm not sure who this blonde fellow is. Trays. Some wrapping paper, an outdoor wall decor. I have spotted an absolutely incredible antique lamp. It looks to be from the early 1900s, Victorian, maybe Edwardian era. And it even has its original finial on top. It's a brass letter holder with a little shell tray at the front mounted on a wood base and made into a lamp. It's $12.99. It has its original shade and original fixtures. It's absolutely unbelievable. Mum has found another ethnic wood carving. We found one of these in our last trip. Spectacular. And I'm wondering if it's by the same artist. The detail is just super. She is $6, an absolute steal. And behind her right here is a stack of little teak coasters. They have a hole 
uh, on one side and I believe that uh, they are missing their stand. It would be a post with a base. So let's uh, hold on to those and keep our eye out for the other piece. This is a lovely little flower fairy. She's $4, but sadly she's missing her foot. So we will have to leave her in her basket there. <laughs> Lots of plaques and signs, a little hummingbird trinket box there. I do wish they wouldn't put so much tape on these uh, painted boxes. It's super hard to remove the tape without ruining the paint. We'll keep going. All sorts of baskets here. It's a little riser for plants possibly decorative items oh look at this lovely piece it's an oval framed oil painting it's an original oil four dollars I think these were quite popular in the 70s the blues are gorgeous it would go with nautical decor quite well so let's pop that into our cart. Sadly, no sign of the holder for the coasters, but mum has found quite a nice basket there. It's woven, it's jute. I just don't think that I have room for that in my booth and the space it would take up uh, wouldn't really justify it. Back here is a ginormous metal flower wall decor piece. It looks like a home goods or Michael's item. There's the hanger at the back. It does have some bent bends and damage to the leaves and for that reason I am going to leave it. We are here in the metal section and I have noticed these two coral replicas. They are blue and attached to acrylic. They look like they've had some repairs and they're $10 each so I am going to leave those on the shelf. Lots of silver tone and silver plated trays. Just checking them over to see if by any chance a sterling one has snuck in. This one is interesting because it has a bear on it. I'm not sure whether you are able to see that. Over here are the outside wrought iron pieces we saw on the new cart. Moving into the gold tone and colored metals over here. Look at this nutcracker. This is fantastic. I think it is possibly a replica of an old piece, but nevertheless, the duck or goose on top of there just is everything. <laughs> Way down on the bottom here is a spectacular sea urchin vase. I think it's crate and barrel. And it does have its original sticker on the bottom. It's in great shape. Absolutely no damage whatsoever. Just a little bit of scuffing. Some marks that could probably be removed with a magic eraser. It's $13. We'll absolutely take that. Back here is a pair of elephant bookends, but sadly, as you can see, this one is really badly cracked and repaired. Um, the other one is in fine condition, but I am going to leave these for somebody else who might want them for themselves and can just turn those around so the crack doesn't show. Up here is a fantastic EAPG, Early American Pressed Glass Pedestal Cake Stand. We'll take that. These are bone plates. 
Uh, folks used to put these next to their dinner plate as a place to put their fish bones. They're $3 a piece, but again, something that doesn't sell ever so well for me, although they do look really, really nice uh, hung on the wall in a display. Lots of little creamers and mugs over here. I did decide to put those ceramic write-on place cards back on the shelf. I looked them up on eBay and the price ticket was $9.99 and that's just about what they're selling for on eBay. They come in different styles. These were fleur-de-lis. They also have um, frogs which sell a little bit better. But uh, the profit just wasn't there, so I decided to leave those on the shelf along with the Harley Davidson and the Mickey Mouse Christmas mug, um, as I suspected, only about 8 to $12 on those. As you can see, all sorts of kitcheny bits here. Lots and lots to see mugs and canisters decorative bits here is a vintage ashtray it's $2.99 not ever so exciting we're going to leave that on the shelf Here's a Better Homes and Gardens bowl. I believe that came in the nesting set. In the mugs, I have spotted a Denby creamer. Denby of England makes lovely pottery items. Sadly, the covered sugar bowl is nowhere to be found. So I am going to leave that on the shelf. This is fun. As many of you know, my son's name is Jake. And it's really not that often we find pieces with Jake on rather than Jacob. Jake is his actual given name. Oktoberfest mugs here. All sorts. We are back here in the metal section and I have spotted this amazing Seth Thomas little travel clock. Look at the detail of this piece. It's obviously vintage, has a little bit of wear on the back, but even if it doesn't work, uh, it's an amazing decorative piece for $4. Little dolphins there. The um, edges of those pieces are notoriously sharp. So um, I don't usually pick them up. All sorts of candle holders, sconces and racks. Decorative pieces, candle holders. Here is a grasshopper garden steak oh he's $15 that's just a bit steep for me so I'll leave him this is the plate with the bear on it it's William Rogers WM Rogers let me see if I can zoom in on that there we go this is a silver plate piece I'm not sure what it's advertising it looks a bit like Yogi Bear but I'm not sure uh, whether it is or not he is tipping his hat. They just wheeled out yet another cart full of new treasures. So we are here having a look. In this basket, there are some vintage car prints. It looks like there are four of them, all framed. They're definitely not originals. So if I had to guess, I would say probably 8 to $10 a piece. This bunny is lovely. She is a music box. She's got a ladybird on her spout, but sadly her daffodil corsage there is broken. So we'll leave her. This is an Avon perfume piece, a phone, some board games down here. Oh, look at this. This is a black Libby vase, very vintage. Beautiful piece, handmade, two dollars. We'll definitely grab that. One last check in here. 
a little plush bulldog. We are doing our second go round the store as we do and here is a pink Libby bud vase to match the black one we just found in the new cart. This one has its original sticker and barcode. It is also $2 hand blown, absolutely gorgeous. On the end cap here are two ceramic shoes. They look Dutch. They are blue and white in the style of Delft blue. They are not marked $6 each, but shoes are really popular and they sell well for me. So I am absolutely going to take these. If we can find a safe spot, I'll perhaps have to go in mum's cart. We are finishing up our shopping trip in the very first aisle of the store. This hummingbird with the broken beak is still here. Here's a Donnie and Marie Osmond uh, glass from the Flamingo. It's a little worse for wear. The flash paint is coming off. Look at this trio of gorgeous paperweights. This one is a Rolf. It's real flowers encased in lucite. The other two are glass, a Mille Fiore and a gorgeous iridescent art glass piece. Now the question becomes, which of these is the most valuable? There are a few variables that determine value, age, demand, and whether or not the piece is signed. I'm quite excited about these. So during my haul, we are going to peel off the labels together to see if they are in fact signed. It's quite a pretty candle holder. Just a single though. The flowers are a little bit damaged. This looks like the base of a fairy lamp. I can tell because it has a ridge around the edge. I don't think it's a trinket box. And here is the top part. It has a hole in it to let the light out. $2 for each side. It fits perfectly on there. The top has a ridge as well. Stops it from sliding off. That is so exciting. I am so happy that both pieces are there. Some candlesticks here. These are Ikea pieces. Big stack of plates. This is lovely. It's a little fairy trinket box. She's made of moss and all sorts of materials, really detailed. She's lovely. We'll take her for $2. It's a shell, some Jack Daniels uh, gift box advertising, candlesticks. Let's check the candle shelf for Glassy Baby. All sorts of candles and holders. And don't forget the top shelf. Mum and I were just trying to work out what this thing is. It's a project piece made by um, either Jim or Kim Pulse 2022. We couldn't work out what it was, but I noticed this hole and there's also a hole in the top so we think it is a lamp part of a lamp base um, ready to be uh, made into a whole lamp it is nine dollars and honestly I just don't have the time for another project so we are going to leave it on the shelf in the lamp section for somebody else this is a beautiful vintage solid wood desk. It has inset brass hardware. Unfortunately, the um, drawers are not dovetailed, which I really love, but it is a nice solid piece and $80. I've just spotted something else over here. Moving the carts out of the way. It is a pig. I think this is a Cracker Barrel piece. Cracker Barrel cookie jar. Really nicely done. It is Cracker Barrel 
pig with apples cookie jar. Sadly, these don't sell for ever such a lot, but he is fun. If you would like to purchase an item you see in my haul, please email me at thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your address, the item, and the price I mention. If it's available, I will send you an emailed invoice. Here on my dining room table is everything mum and I found at Goodwill. First, we have the Mickey Mouse napkin holder, which was, in actual fact, the first thing we found. This is really, really fun. Plenty of room for napkins or letters. I believe it is made of stainless steel, a chromed finish. I paid $5 for it, and I shall ask $20. Next, we have this beautiful oil painting of blue flowers and the vase has a blue-gray tint. It works really, really well. Super duper still life. I absolutely love this. I believe it's from the 70s. Um, it has a vintage hook for hanging up there. So it's ready to go. There's a backing on it. I paid $4 for it and I shall ask $30. This was a really good find, better than I thought. Um, I took a minute to fix the hinges. I popped them back through their holes and bent the little tabs. So now, let's see if I can do this one handed. No, I can't. Stand by. You can have a look at the side of the tin while I do this. There we go. So now it opens on the hinge very nicely. And the thing I love about this is it has its original um, little paperwork inside here. Why I box my goods in tin. And there's a little blurb in there from... Jack Daniel Distillery. Oh, Jack Daniel himself. Jack Daniel Distiller, Lynchburg, Tennessee, October the 6th, 1906. That's fantastic. It's absolutely lovely. I'm so glad it has that in it still. Let's see. On the back, it says container manufactured by Barringer Wallace and Manners in Mansfield, England since 1890. I paid $6 for it and uh, I value this right around $50. Let's stand Jack back up here. Next we have a pair, well not really a pair, but two Libby vases in different colours. We have this gorgeous pale pinky colour. Uh, this one has its original sticker on and this one is black. Uh, it's not even amethyst, it's really, really black, black. Absolutely lovely, both hand blown uh, and I paid $2 a piece. And I am going to ask $18 a piece on these. This next piece is a bit of a mystery to me. It's a porcelain or ceramic basket and it has transferware flowers on it. They look like anemones to me. And they're absolutely gorgeous. The detail, let me see if I can zoom for you. The detail is fabulous. Look at that. Just lovely. The other side has the sticker on it, which I will attempt to soak off. Oh, speaking of that, you know what we were going to do was um, check these gorgeous paperweights over here to see if they are marked. This one and this one have stickers on. Obviously, we're not going to soak this one because it has the fantastic 
original label on. I believe this might just be taped because, oh, yeah, because it didn't come like that. So I'm going to use a hairdryer just to loosen the tape on that one. But these, I was all prepared and forgot. We're just going to pop in a shallow little dish of water here while we cover all the other pieces. And hopefully, by the time we're finished with the others, these labels will come right off. They are glass, so you don't have to worry about any damage to the pieces. Hopefully those labels are just going to soak right off in a few minutes. Where were we over here? Next we have this gorgeous little gift box. It's a little tiny fairy sitting on top of um, a flower. And again, the detail on this piece is incredible. She's got a little necklace and a pearl on her dress sitting on this flower which is covered in lovely sparkly glittery bits and the flower has some tendrils and leaves and there um, it's sitting on some moss with some more little beads and the paper says treasure the small things in life and it does open up let me see I tell you, if I had wishes, one of my wishes would be to have three arms and hands. This job definitely requires an extra hand so much of the time. There we go. Perseverance it is a little gift box. There's the bottom. I paid $2 for it. And on that, I shall ask $18. Here we have a gorgeous piece of EAPG, Early American Pressed Glass. And if you're thinking it looks a little bit different, and you may have thought it was frosted, that was just dirt. It was really, really manky. I put it in some hot soapy water, gave it a wash, and it came out beautifully. Just a lovely, lovely piece of glass. Look at that. Fantastic. Perfect for a cake or cookies or cupcakes, whatever you would like. I paid up just a bit for it. Uh, $7, but something that's lasted so well for so long, I would hate to see anything happen to it. And unfortunately, sometimes the longer things sit at Goodwill, um, the more risk there is of obviously something tragic happening. So for that, I will ask uh, $30. I was really excited about this next piece because I've never actually um, found a fairy lamp like this. My first, I'm going to take this off. I put, um, two little tea lights stacked in here because it could really actually use a taller votive. You could use just the one, but um, yeah, I think the height does it justice. So I put two in there. It has this rim around the edge of the bottom, which is enclosed. And the top, obviously, as you saw, is open and has the rim to keep it nice and secure on its base. So it can't get knocked over. But it's just lovely, absolutely gorgeous design, like a little lampshade design. I love it. They'd priced the top and bottom separately, which is fine with me. I paid four dollars for it, and I am going to ask twenty-eight dollars. So <laughs> this is a funny story on this. I was working my way down the metal aisle, as you probably saw, and um, ahead of me was a gentleman and he uh, actually reached right across me <laughs> as I was starting to film this clock and he picked it up, which was fine with me. No worries. We, we actually cut off the film and uh, went to a different aisle so he could uh, come the other way and do his thing. 
A few minutes later, I was scurrying past the books and DVDs to get out of the way of the new carts being wheeled out. And I noticed that on the bottom shelf, he'd actually changed his mind and popped it down. So I um, grabbed it. As you can see, it's absolutely lovely. It's a travel clock by Seth Thomas. Now I gave it a wind and um, the arms move freely when you turn the knobs and the um, alarm hand also works fine. It ticks for just a few seconds and then stops. So I'm thinking based on the back, it got a bit of moisture in it. The screws are quite rusty. So um, I'm going to open it up and just see if I can put a little bit of WD-40 on it um, I'll probably soak those screws to get them clean again. Maybe I will do a video. I don't really know what I'm doing as far as clocks go. The best I can do is um, open it up and just see um, if a little bit of WD will fix the problem or if it's really dusty and dirty inside, we'll get a toothpick and try to clean it. Anyhow, paid $4 for it and uh, online these are about $40 to $50 in working condition. I don't usually um, shop for plush, but Miley, my daughter who's now 13, loved these girls when she was little. So it sort of brought back memories for me. This is a Lala Loopsie doll. This one in particular is a little tulip fairy in her cocoon. And if I can just pull her out, see she's got a little cocoon there that zips up. And then she's got these, again, I need three hands. She's got these wings that open up her fairy wings, little arms. So there we go. There she is. And she is just lovely. And uh, she is worth a pretty good profit, probably about $25 on this girl. I do need to give this outside a wash. It looks like somebody dropped it on black top. It's got some um, oily grease on there, which I'll just use a little bit of um, straight shout laundry cleaner. Give that a soak and then hopefully she will have a nice clean cocoon to rest in. La La Loopsie, $3, probably into about $25. Now this piece is Nippon, and I'm not sure whether or not it actually came with a little lid. I think it did now looking at it, but it would actually make a super vase. I really love the colors on this. These colors remind me of my Nana. She loves the um, oranges and sort of earth tones there. A little gold outline. It's really beautiful and the gold is missing just enough to give it some age and character. Really love this piece. It will be fantastic with some white flowers in, some dogwood or something like that, some cherry blossoms. Uh, Okay, $2.99. Let's just give this a peel and see. Oh, that's stuck. Let's see. Oops. Nail polish is coming off on there now. Here we go. Uh, hand painted Nippon. Nippon means Japan. So this is an early Japanese piece. We'll soak that off. Actually, what we can do can scooty scoot these over just a little bit and we can oops, pop this in there soak off the label all right next we have our gorgeous I think she might be Indonesian and she goes beautifully with this vase behind her doesn't she Indonesian girl she's carved wood I did actually um, slay slath her in um, oil some mineral oil there and she came up beautifully the talent of these artisans is just incredible just the features of this beautiful lady and the texture of her scarf absolutely lovely she's not signed 
I paid $6 for her and pieces like this uh, online anywhere from $60 up into the hundreds. I shall probably look to get 75 on this lady. I believe these shoes are made by Gans. Um, Bella Casa is a division of Gans. They're not marked. Actually, one has 12 on it. I'm not sure why. But they're lovely. They are uh, ceramic shoes in the style of the Dutch Delft blue, blue and white. They are hand painted. Each one is just a little bit different as you can see here. The tones um, vary from light to dark but it seems that somebody wanted a pair of shoes and they are to some extent hand molded or hand form if you, formed if you can see the difference in thickness here to here. I love the differences in pieces that show that shows they are hand done to some extent. Uh, these were six dollars a piece, and uh, I would look to get twenty eight to thirty uh, each on those. Back here is a crate and barrel, beautiful, beautiful vase. It has its original label. It's really, really heavy. Let me flip it over. Oh, it's upside down. Let's see, it says Crate and Barrel Sanibel Vase Small made in Thailand. And seriously, it's super duper heavy. There we go. Nice uh, thin opening at the top, which means your flowers are going to sit nicely um, in a row. So that's a nice advantage to this piece. Beautiful design and texture. I paid $13 for it. And uh, I believe this is about a $50 to $65 piece. Next we have a beautiful piece of Italian pottery. It's a planter with fantastic little flowers. They almost look like, like they've been piped, uh, like those little cookie stars the little decorations, the sugar stars. It's absolutely gorgeous. It is glazed inside and out, um, created to look like wood. It is signed on the bottom, FF891 Italy. I believe that to be uh, this artist. Let's see, on Etsy it was sold for $30. Fratelli? Fanciulacci. I'm sorry if I destroyed the pronunciation or you Italian speaking folks, but uh, yes, absolutely lovely. Let's see if this one has a similar signature. Pictures aren't catching up with me. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Yes, quite similar, isn't it? So I think we have found it there. I paid $5 for it. And uh, as we saw, I am going to ask $30. Next, we have our amazing 1900s lamp. As I said, I believe this to be Victorian, which is uh, 18 to 1900 or so. Uh, that was the reign of Queen Victoria in England. And after her, her son Edward took the throne, uh, leading into the Edwardian um, era through about 1910. So we have our original finial, our original beautiful shade it's amazing that this survived just a few little scratches and creases on it but for the most part it's an unbelievable shape and coming down it does have this excellent uh, bend in the pipe to allow the shade to sit right over the letter holder 
which is brass. Look at the detail of this. It's just amazing. There we go. I have been zoomed in. And it has a little area here for either a pen or probably stamps. It was incredibly $12.99. And uh, let's see if it works. It's a lovely long cord. I just plugged it into my wall over there. And it has a, a rocker switch. So fingers crossed. Yay! Look how amazing that is. What a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. I am so thrilled with that. That is going to be hard to let go. But uh, if you have a 1900s uh, living room or decor or bedroom, this would be just an incredible find for you. Uh, $13, I shall probably ask right around 150 on that one. Right in front here we have a, I believe this is Indiana glass, a hen on a nest. Uh, these are ever so popular and they sell well for me. I paid $6 on this one and I shall ask $28. Oh, <laughs> this mug is for Carrie, my dear friend. You might know her as the Desert Mermaid on YouTube and whatnot, but I, s <laughs> I saw this and it instantly said, you must buy me for Carrie. This is other friends and this is you. <laughs> we'll see if I can give it to her on camera because it's, it's amazing. Love you, Carrie. <laughs> This is a duck nutcracker, very vintage. I always remember at Christmas time, my grandparents would have a huge bowl of nuts uh, on the table and um, my grandfather would sit cracking nuts and sharing them around. It's one of my fond memories of the holidays. So I absolutely had to get this guy. I don't know if he's original or a reproduction but he's still amazing uh, five dollars and I shall ask uh, 28 on him that brings us to our amazing paperweights here let's see if this has done the job oh yeah that's coming away nicely That one's all right. Now, this one didn't need soaking. This is a W. Rolf piece. It says here that the plant is a verbena and was considered sacred in Rome as a cure all used in ceremonies. Look at this. Let's zoom in. It's going to be lovely when that paper uh, is removed from the bottom because the moment you can see the words, it actually is a magnifier as well. Fresh flowers in Lucite, they're amazingly preserved, just beautiful. As I said, I love that there's the original paper on there. If you're going to try to remove price stickers from paper, the best way is to use a hairdryer. Be patient on low heat and um, after a few minutes, the glue will soften and you can gently peel the sticker. If it doesn't come off easily, keep uh, using the hairdryer until... Um, it pulls away. If you hurry, you run the risk of actually tearing the surface of the paper away. So let's see here if our other beauties are, oh, yep, that has fallen right off there and I'm seeing a mark. Let's take this away. What does this say? This says Intaglio by Intaglio Anton. I think the name is Susan Anton. She is an amazing artist. 
Intaglio. Beautiful, beautiful piece this. Iridescent gold and blue and purple. So this one is signed. And let's have a look at this one. Our sticker is off as well. I am seeing something that is very exciting to me. I don't know if you can see it. It's that little teeny tiny white thing in the middle there. That tells me immediately that this is a piece by Peter McDougall. He is an artist uh, who works in Creef in Scotland, which is part of the British Isles where I am from. And let me see if I can show you why I recognize it. Oh goodness. Let's see. There we go. I don't know if you can see, but in the middle of his creation somewhere, he inserts four little sticks of glass. They say PMCD for his initials. There we go. That's much better. You can see the initials. I don't know if you can actually see the sticks. There we go. You can see the sticks of glass that he has created each with his initials in. Isn't that amazing? Incredible, incredible piece, incredible find. I'm really excited about this. Um, I believe this piece to be worth right around $100, possibly more. It is a smaller one, probably about two inches, but the craftsmanship is unparalleled. Let me zoom in again for you here, just so you can see. Look how much work goes into this. The colors, the sticks of glass, the artistry, it's just unbelievable. Just beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, I paid, what did I pay for that? two dollars <laughs> i paid more for um this one <laughs> that one was um three dollars so to answer the question at the beginning of the video the uh paperweight that is worth the most money is going to be the peter mcdougall piece that you see here followed by the Susan Anton Intaglio, probably worth right around $50. And um, this one, W. Rolf, the Verbena in a loose site, uh, probably about $45 to $50. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the thrift trip with my mum and the haul. Please stay tuned. I have the exciting announcement coming up. Uh, a famous YouTuber coming to town, my dear friend. Uh, we have dates, we have her identity, and as usual, some footage of Bear and Rio, my German shepherds, having some fun at the park, and uh, something everybody seems to enjoy every single video, the gorgeous, adorable little hummingbirds in my garden. As always, if you see something you would like to purchase, please send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Include your name, your address, the item you're interested in, and your offer. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time. Bye! I have exciting news. At the end of this month, my dear friend and fellow YouTuber, Laura Coldwell, will be in Las Vegas for a meet and greet. Together, we will be at the Charleston Antique Mall for their annual Vintage Bazaar. They have vendors and food and entertainment, and we will be there to meet you and shop with you. So if you're in Vegas or visiting Vegas, please come down and see us April 29th 
2023, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Charleston Antique Mall is at 560 South Decatur Boulevard here in Las Vegas. We hope to see you there. Doing? Give me the ball. <laughs> Ruby, where's the ball? Ruby, where's the ball? Hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. I'm gonna get you. Give me the ball. I'm gonna get you. Come on.
it's quite a warm day and Ziggy and Bandit are on their cat tray here. We got little paws dangling on both levels. <laughs> here is Bandit. Hi B. Hello. Are you very sleepy? And up on top here is Ziggy. Hi Z. Hello. It's quite high up. I can't I'm having to look and see what I'm doing through the lens. Hello, am I disturbing you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 